Remember MacGyver? The guy was a genius. He could make a speedboat out of a coffin, a candelabra, and a big wad of chewing gum, then use it to save the world. In fact, we found another MacGyver, a medical MacGyver. He may not have a mullet, but he too is striving to save the world, and he's doing it one toy at a time. Here's Allie Ward. When Jose Gomez Marquez goes to work, he's like a big kid in a candy store. Actually, a toy store. It's his job to take toys apart, and then after some serious brainstorming and a lot of sophisticated tinkering in his lab, he puts the parts together again, giving them new life in medicine. The Little Devices Lab looks at how DIY policies and design affect healthcare. How do we democratize medical fabrication so everybody can create technologies that can make us better? We can find toys anywhere in the world. And we can find the same type of toys that we'll find in downtown Cambridge or Boston. We can also find them in a place like downtown Managua, Nicaragua. He transforms toys into life-saving tools, turning cheap, mass-produced playthings into medical devices that might normally cost thousands. He's a true medical MacGyver. Just down the street at one of Jose's favorite toy stores, the mystery of transforming toys begins. And he invited us to tag along. Okay, so Jose, show me how you shop for toys. Because yeah. I have a feeling it's very different from what other people well, do. It's, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, when I look at things, I immediately start to look at the mechanism and try to see, okay, what are the underlying mechanisms around these things? Things like this. Like, could or, you do something with uh, this light sparkler? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a fiber optic, and get, buying fiber optics is actually pretty expensive, but you can find these anywhere. Toy shopping with Jose is pretty amazing. You can see playthings through the eye of an engineer. This is like this magic sand thing. You could use it for making prosthetic molds really? for people who've lost a leg, absolutely. Everywhere he looks, Jose sees possibilities for medical use. In no time, our bag is full and the real magic can begin. Thank you so much. Bye. This is exciting. Yeah. There you go. It's great. Let's make some medicine. It's just a short walk back to MIT where Jose and his team turn toys into life-saving devices. Okay, so Jose, what can we do with this light sparkler that I love so much? I think we can hook it up to a camera. So uh, are you gonna cut it up? I'm gonna cut it up. I'm gonna take it apart first. If I put my finger on it. Oh, I want you to shine light onto my finger. You can uh, see this go through, you can see the Yeah, light you'll see the light go through and you'll, you'll see the pulse of my finger be measured using the, the fiber optics. Wow, so fiber optic filaments harvested from a toy you can now use as a diagnostic tool. Nuts, <laughs> that's great. With added infrared lighting, this basic method could help detect serious health conditions, such as pneumonia. And that's just one example of what Jose and his team can do. This will concentrate the sun's energy onto a spot right around here. And then we're gonna put a pressure chamber that allows us to st sterilize surgical instruments. That way you can have clean instruments in the middle of nowhere just using energy from the sun. Sounds cool, huh? This version of the device cost only $300, but would otherwise run up to $28,000. The Little Device's products and know-how are already touching lives in many countries and multiple American cities. And Jose and his team not only make instruments, they inspire others to make their own. What, what gets us really jazzed up about what we do is when somebody gives us a call or when we visit somebody in a hospital and, and they say, this is what I made. Let's brainstorm about how we can make it better. That's, you can't really top that. A process that produces elevated new ways of thinking and proves they're not just toying around. I tell our students, our jobs is to get creatively distracted, have fun, and then eventually something will hit us. Do you have fun when you come to work every day? Pretty much. Really? <laughs> I believe it. You're surrounded by toys.